Hi, I'm Norm Haley, Forestry, Wildlife, and Natural Resources Agent for the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And as a Natural Resources Agent, we get a lot of phone calls on cougar sightings throughout the state of Alabama. However, there's been no confirmed sightings in over 60 years throughout the state. However, there have been in the region all around us. Like in 2008, there was one panther that was sighted within Georgia and confirmed. Since 2010, there's been over nine confirmations in Arkansas. And just last year in the state of Tennessee, in over 100 years, there had not been a confirmation and six showed up confirmed within the western part of Tennessee. Interestingly enough, one of those was confirmed through DNA analysis as a female from over 1,200 miles away in South Dakota. That's really important because it at least gives the possibility for reproduction and population establishment here in the southeast and in Tennessee, very close to the northern border there in Alabama. Now today's video, we're going to talk about how to properly identify mountain lions their sign, and also some ways that will increase your chances to gather evidence that will help you to actually provide a confirmation for the first time in over 60 years in this state. So what does it take to actually confirm a mountain lion within the state of Alabama? Well, reported sightings just aren't enough. There have been studies that have shown that 75% or more of reported sightings are actually in error, even in places where mountain lions are known to exist. Now we've got to actually instead gather physical hard evidence. That might be a dead mountain lion itself, hair, scat, tracks, a kill site, and of course, video or photographic evidence. Now, we've got a lot of different tools and techniques that we're gonna share with you today in terms of gathering some of that hard physical evidence. Um, but perhaps one of the most common techniques that folks are gonna rely on will be use of a trail cam. And we're gonna show you the proper ways to set that up to help increase your odds of gathering physical photographic evidence to be confirmed by a wildlife biologist or regional extension agent. So when it comes to setting trail cameras for mountain lions, it's really not a whole lot different than setting them like you would for white-tailed deer. You're gonna, gonna wanna place them in areas that you're gonna have more travel, like uh, creek bottoms, uh, ridge tops, funnels, pinch points, places like that. Or like we have here today, we have a bush hogged road connecting two egg, with egg fields within a hard, hardwood vein. Um, now with trail cameras, the big difference from deer is you need to set them very low for mountain lions. This one's only about a foot off the ground. Mountain lion's only gonna stand about mid-thigh on, on, on a full-grown uh, human being, so they've gotta be lower in order for you to get that good quality photograph. Now, one other big consideration when setting these cameras is to have something in the camera's background that's gonna offer somewhat of a frame of reference for scale, and we'll talk about that next. So when it comes to scales of reference in front of our trail cameras, we recommend the use of a T-post or a rebar stake placed at five, 10, or even 20 yard increments in front of the camera. Um, if it's more of an open area, like an egg field or a pasture, you, you might wanna mark a little further than that. Um, but with these, we do recommend that you mark at 12 inch increments up to about that three foot in height. After all, we do expect a male cougar to be within about that two and a half to three foot at the shoulder height there. Um, and we are dealing with felines here. So they are attracted to flash and movement just like a house cat would be. We can take pieces of mylar tape or aluminum foil like this and wrap them around uh, to have them maybe blow in the wind, create a little bit more flash in the area. Uh, a CD tied to a string creates a lot of movement. And also if you're lucky enough to have some turkey feathers or duck feathers laying around that you've harvested, uh, you can also tie those up with just a single strand of fishing line to the, uh, to the uh, T post that you're using. Um, in addition uh, to just increasing the attractiveness of this site to mountain lions, and you might also get some other things like bobcats or, or other wild animals coming in to keep your uh, camera active and, and catching some neat pictures. Also, we can key in on their olfactory sense of smell with uh, formulated uh, urines that you can purchase on the market, actually specific cougar urines. You can spray that in the area, also up and down the post, just to increase the activity and attractiveness of your, of your camera site. Um, now, we finally say that we've got all this uh, steps taken into account and say you do get a picture of a cougar that you'd like to have confirmed. Well, we've got a lot of in different information towards identifying the actual characteristics of those cougars, which we'll talk about next. Hi, I'm Spencer Bradley with Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about identifying mountain lions either in the field or from photos. Now, every year we have reported sightings of mountain lions, but they're never confirmed. Often these sightings are mistaken uh, sightings of black bears, uh, house cats, domestic dogs, deer, bobcats can all be confused for a mountain lion. Now that might seem silly, but when you think about being out at dusk or dawn, only seeing a glimpse of an animal, it's easy to see how some of these species can be confused for a mountain lion. 
Now, speaking of misidentifications, we get sightings again every year of black panthers, black mountain lions, whatever you want to call them. Now, there has never been a confirmed melanistic black mountain lion. There are black jaguars, melanistic jaguars, that are native to South America and occasionally come up into uh, the extreme southern parts of North America. Now, mountain lions that we would see here in Alabama or the rest of the southeast are going to be brownish orange to a sandy yellow. They're going to have a white underbelly and they're going to have a very small head compared to the rest of their body. They're also going to have small ears. Now the kittens are going to be a more gray color and they're going to have spots that are going to fade out after a couple of years. Now let's compare the size of a mountain lion to some other felines that you might catch on camera here in Alabama. Your common house cat from the floor to its shoulders is going to be around a foot. The bobcat is not going to be much larger, around 18 or 19 inches to the shoulders. Now your mountain lion on the other hand is going to be anywhere from two and a half to three feet at the shoulders. They're also going to have a much larger body, anywhere from three to five feet, and a very long tail, anywhere from two and a half to three feet. Now that total length of that animal is going to be anywhere from six to eight feet, which is much larger than any, any other feline that we would have here in Alabama. Now on the subject of domestic dogs, they can grow very large in certain breeds, but the dog is going to have a very large blocky head relative to its body. Now the mountain lion is going to be much more streamlined and it's going to have a very small head relative to its body and very small short ears. Now, once you've gone through these photos or your sighting and you think you have confirmed a mountain lion, it's time to go to, to your extension agent and your federal and state biologist and try to get a confirmation. If you go through all these steps, you can be the first person to confirm a mountain lion in Alabama in over 60 years. Now to contact your local county office, look us up in the phone book under Alabama Cooperative Extension or get online to www.aces.edu forward slash directory. From there you'll find an interactive state map. Click on your county and then scroll down the staff to find the Forestry, Wildlife, and Natural Resources agent that serves your area. Then click on their name or picture and you'll find their office number, their mobile number, and also their email. Feel free to give us a call and we'll be glad to help you document whatever evidence you may find.